that sugar sweet You got what I need Sipping on the potion All that good emotion Just my kind of heat Keep it on repeat Testing by the potion Love it, this the potion The first proelium went well Aurelia swept the knight from Valhalla Everyone fought well, but I was particularly impressed with Nico. His fight hadn't much excitement, he just fought a solid match and wins the crowd over with his presence. Nico fights for his family, for Aurelius, he fights to win. He fights as if he doesn't care about public opinion. That's why he's never lost a fight. After the Proelium, Nico hosted another party at Hayes to celebrate our victory. There were no party crashers this time, only Aurelius fighters and affiliates. It was a great way to cap off the night. I'm taking the day off for recovery. Even though I won the match, Belder managed to land a few good shots that I am definitely feeling this morning. I was confident in myself to win, but the bloodborne of Eric the Red is no walk in the park. I have a ton of respect for Balder, he is definitely one of the best I've faced. If I hadn't listened to everyone in my corner, maybe the outcome would have been different. I'll be back training for the next Proelium tomorrow. If everyone I face will be as skilled as Balder I will enjoy my time in the arena. Legacy may just have the best competition that there is to offer. Hey Luke, I'm off. Jules and I are just going shopping, I'll be back in a few hours. Okay, I'll see you later. I have to go by Aurelius, Shields asked me to stop by. There's something he wants to talk about. Did he say what it's about? He didn't mention anything, just that it's important. Well you'll find out when you get there. I've gotta run, I'm taking the car. Try not to miss me too much. Luke, come in. I'd like to introduce you to Thomas Goodwin. It's a pleasure to finally meet the new bad boy of Legacy in person. I'm sorry this hasn't happened sooner. I've been tied up recently and was unable to get away. Usually you would have met the historian sooner but I hear you've been in good hands. A great fight last night. Maybe one day the famous phrase will change too, I am Luke Hart. Thank you sir. Nice to meet you as well. If you don't mind me asking, how do you and Professor Shields know each other? Oh, we've been friends for years. How long has it been now? 20 years. 20 years, that's it? The good professor and I met when he first joined Aurelius. Even then he was a great fighter, the echo of the Lionhearted. He still fights that way. I've been tracking you since you were born. You're the second echo I've brought in since I took over the job. Shields was the first. Why are there, so few echoes in Legacy? That's a complicated longer conversation for another time. The easiest way to answer is that echoes are rare. Added to the fact that Legacy is just the tip of the iceberg. This world is darker, more mysterious, and more beautiful than you can imagine. In time you will learn more, but honestly the vastness of this universe is tremendous. After all of this time, even I am still learning new things on a daily basis. I look forward to having that conversation one day. By now you should be familiar with at least three houses in Legacy, as my son tells it. You've already become acquainted with a few members of the House of Crassus. Bobby told me you and Owen were just moments away from throwing hands with one another. I would have paid money to see you annihilate him. Back to what I was saying though, there are eight sects of Legacy, five of which are in the US, Aurelius, Crassus, Valhalla, Khan, and Ares. There are only four echoes known to Legacy. You, the echo of Spartacus. Shields, the echo of King Richard. Kenji, the echo of Miyamoto Musashi. And Owen, the echo of Achilles. Right now you don't need to worry about the three European sects. You would only face one of them if a special match is ordered by the Assembly. The Pro Ilium is held four times a year. The final Pro Ilium is like the Super Bowl of Legacy. Only then can you be summoned to battle any fighter. Usually, the best bloodborne are brought together to face each other in the final proalium of the year. What is the assembly? Shields mentioned them before the first proalium, but didn't have time to go into detail. They are the Council of Legacy. This committee was formed to enforce the laws of the institution. Six warriors who had long since touched the sand of the arena are chosen and entrusted with the responsibility. During its inception, five rules were put into place to protect the warriors during competition, and they're strictly enforced. Rule number one warriors could not be slaves. 
everyone who fights in Legacy is a free man, with the free will to choose their own fate. And every fighter must be compensated for any victory in Legacy. Rule number 2, fighters are free to join any sect they please. But while a member of a sect, a fighter cannot be approached by a controlling member of an opposing party. They must not be influenced into new membership. Rule number 3, at no time is a member of another sect allowed to set foot on the opposing house's territory. Rule number 4, only approved individuals are granted to be in the legacy audience. People of substantial means are given access to purchase arena seating. Discretion is of the utmost value. If any person is caught exposing the world of legacy, the consequence is punishable by death. Rule number 5, every fighter is to be granted a fair fight. Every gladiator has the right to a warrior's death. These ideas sink into me as the complete picture of this world is coming into focus. This institution was created to last, like all things the ancient Romans created. So many have known about legacy, though most don't. If they did, they'd realize that Numerian was just as influential as the man he shared his name with. These rules were initially different, and eventually, the idea of individually controlled sex faded out. Once that happened, the assembly assumed complete control over legacy. When this power shift occurred, more and more rules and regulations started to appear. Before long, the assembly was controlling everything. Even who would be fighting in the bouts. The new legacy institution outraged those who still supported the individual sex. The way they saw it, the assembly had become a corrupt band of tyrants. The assembly began manufacturing fights for profit, even going as far as ordering the deaths of several fighters who begged for mercy. There was only one way to end that control. The supporters of individual sex gathered a band of warriors to march on the assembly and kill them all. They called themselves Shade, and they operated in total secrecy. It is believed that the group wore black hooded cloaks as a way of remaining unrecognizable. But their effort was unsuccessful. To safeguard themselves, the assembly autocrats began to control legacy from behind closed doors, and Shade found refuge in the shadows. Are these plans to overthrow the assembly still in the works? Personally, I support the idea of sex being controlled individually. As long as the assembly is still around, it will continue to hold power. As far as Shade, they were never heard from again. Some say the faction is still around, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Though the general consensus among the historians is that Shade died off shortly after it was first formed. Are we telling ghost stories, Thomas? Because if we are, I've got the scariest one of them all. What are you doing here? There's no need to be so tense, Shieldsy. I've simply come to meet the marvelous new gladiator I've heard so much about. Is this he, the Echo of Spartacus? How are you doing, son? My name is Lazarus Caius Crassus. I hear you're quite the spectacle. It's a pleasure to meet the Decimator of Balder. The gratification isn't mutual. Oh wonderful. Such tenacity. You really do embody him. Thomas, you've outdone yourself this time. What a find. You know Luke, you'd have done well to join with Crassus. You have no business here Lazarus. Whatever thought conjured you here has left you dangerously out of your element. You found your way in. Now see yourself out. All right Shieldsy. No need to be so crude. I'll leave. Thomas, it was a pleasure as always. Luke, I wish you the best. The offer still stands to be a part of the future of Legacy. Luke, hand me that sword next to you on the mantle. We'll see each other again soon. There's no place you can go that I can't find you. I take it that was the head of Crassus. Lazarus Caius Crassus is the most detestable man alive. He's a plague in this world, along with that entire house. His thirst for blood is only trumped by his reach for a higher station. Lazarus purchases mercenaries, not fighters. Legacy is about history and sport, not death and bereavement. Crassus is not and never was a fighter. His family has bought its way through history. Marcus Licinius Crassus was the wealthiest man in Rome. 
When Claudius Glaber failed to destroy the slave army led by Spartacus, Rome appointed Crassus to assume military command and move against him. Hungry for more than a political position, Crassus was the only person willing to do the job. In 71 BC, at the Battle of Silver River, Crassus defeated the slave army. It was believed that Spartacus had fallen in that battle. Obviously that belief was wrong. And Crassus's only connection to being a soldier is unsuccessfully destroying the slave leader. That's why he was so eager to meet you. Crassus's history only exists through name and money now because Marcus Crassus failed his mission. Spartacus lived then and now through you. Being the wealthiest man in Rome made it easy for Crassus to assure the longevity of his name. In 284 AD, when Numerian and the senators started legacy, Gnaeus Crassus, the descendant of Marcus, wanted in. Fearing ulterior motives, Numerian initially denied Gnaeus that affiliation. An outraged Gnaeus began a rumor that Numerian was in a conspiracy with Rome. It was never proven, but it is suspected that Gnaeus thus engineered the assassination of Numerian. People say that move against Numerian was to show the senators of Rome just how powerful Gnaeus was. That not even the emperor of Rome was safe from his reach. With Numerian out of the picture, Gnaeus campaigned again for membership in legacy. Though, the senators held steadfast to the words of their slaughtered emperor. So Gnaeus bought his way in. Rome had begun with one sect, and now there were two. Gnaeus formed what was originally known as the Inferna Disciples, or Hell's Disciples. He offered a lot of money to anyone who joined his ranks. His last will and testament stipulated that only Acrasus would forever control the Inferna Disciples. Suspecting he was going to the underworld anyway, the name was changed to Crassus. Gnaeus wanted the sect to be synonymous with Hell. After my final prelium, Lazarus tried to kill me. I left the pitch and was walking through the sphere. I had just defeated a Crassus fighter and retained my place as the champion of legacy. Lazarus didn't accept the win. As he saw it, I was supposed to fall in battle. He came at me from behind and stabbed me, puncturing a lung and just missing my heart. Guards saw the commotion and apprehended him before I could get a chance. He was never reprimanded for that act. He just made a large endowment to the assembly, and all was forgiven. I have been plotting since that moment how I will take his life. He will feel the sharp steel of my vengeance before I meet my death. Beware of him. You are a significant threat. Now that he knows you are the echo of Spartacus, it's not unlikely that he will try to have you killed outside of the arena. He is a snake lying in wait. If he can't get to you, he will find a way to bring you to him. Crassus doesn't know where I live. And they wouldn't be stupid enough to try anything at Aurelius. The Kenna is my only concern, but she is rarely out of my sight. The only chance they'd have to take my life when I'm with her, is if they sent an army. Even then, I wouldn't hold my breath. I welcome Crassus's ambitions. Besides, Owen and I have unfinished business, and I am going to settle what he started. Oh my god, you have no idea how much I needed this. I'm so glad we could spend the day together. I am as well. I am still a little on edge from last night. I know Link won his match, but it was nerve-wracking watching him on the sand. I could tell. Hey, that's why we have each other though. I've got you. Same. Other than all of this legacy stuff. How are you and Link doing? We're good. Things couldn't be better. We're going up to Vermont for the weekend. Link and I both love snowboarding. So we figured we might as well make the trip while there's time. You and Luke should come with us. That's so nice, but we wouldn't want to impose. Besides, Luke and I are more warm weather types. No worries, there probably aren't many people who like the cold. This is a really nice car. Thanks. Luke loves it, probably as much as me. Do you think he'd mind if I drove it? Of course you can. This car is insane. 6.4 liter Hemi, pushing 470 horses. It can probably go 0 to 60 in like 4 seconds. I didn't know you knew so much about cars. Yeah, Link doesn't even know. It's kind of a secret. My dad used to own a shop. Every day after school, I'd go there, and he'd teach me all about cars. 
He would have killed for a car like this. We used to go to car shows together all the time. He always said one day he'd buy a 71 Dodge Challenger and rebuild it. That's so great. Has he found one yet? No, he never did. My father passed away two years ago. I'm sorry, I didn't know. It's okay, my dad was sick. I was actually happy when he went. He didn't have to suffer anymore. Can I ask what he passed from? Huntington's chorea, a neurodegenerative genetic disorder. It slowly kills by breaking down the brain until you cease functioning. There's a 50 50th chance a child will develop it if a parent has. Luckily, I tested negative. I was heartbroken when he died. He was my best friend. I went to a dark place after, pretty much closed myself off from the world, from people. And then, a few months later, the guy of my dreams fell in love with me. He reminds me a lot of my dad. That's why I get so nervous thinking about him fighting. I know Link is a good fighter. He can handle his end but I can't help it. I would go insane if he got hurt really bad or worse. I can understand her hesitancy about the Pro Williams more now that she told me about her dad. She and Link are close, probably as close as Luke and I. Jules is in the same position as me, trying to find balance and not hindering who our partners are, while hoping to keep them from harm. Neither one of us want to lose our best friends, but this life that we've chosen to be a part of is not easy. Do you mind if we stop really quick? I have to use the bathroom. Of course. There's a store over there that should be good. Oh, perfect. Waiting for Jules, I couldn't stop thinking about our conversation. I love my family, but I couldn't fathom losing Luke. He is my companion and aim, Tristan to my assault. I am having fun with Jules, but all of the sharing and deep thought has me missing Luke. It's not the same hanging out with your girlfriends when your lover is your best friend. I am looking forward to getting back to him. I text him, What are you doing? I love you. While waiting for Luke to text back, I can't help but notice a glimmer in the window of the store next to the one Jules had run into. It's an engagement ring with a round central cluster of diamonds. I had never asked the question, but I could definitely see myself marrying Luke. There is no doubt that we belong together. We've been attached at the hip for so long. I think I'm nervous about bringing it up because I don't know how Luke would react. What if he didn't want to? I'd feel like a fool. But if he did, I would marry him tomorrow. Okay I'm back. You wouldn't believe the line in there. What are we looking at? Just this little engagement ring. I don't know, it's just a thought. Mrs. Luke Hart. Mrs. McKenna Hart. Sounds fantastic to me. You guys were made for each other. I just know I'd better be the maid of honor when it happens. When it happens. I'll never have an answer until I bring up the question. I will have to talk to him soon. We should grab some food. Damn it. I left Link's burger inside. I'll be right back. Okay. I love you too. The meeting was interesting. I'll tell you about it later. Excuse me. Hey hottie, nice car. You should let me take you for a spin. I can give you a great ride. Back off. I'm warning you. Warning me? We both know you're not gonna do anything. Don't be a bitch. I am trying to be nice, but I don't have to be. You should be begging to come with me. So what's it gonna be? You gonna beg like a good little girl, or am I just going to have to take what I want from you? I'm positive she isn't doing anything with you. You should really mind your business. There's nothing to see here. I'm making it my business. Four of you against her. Doesn't seem fair to me. 
why don't we even the odds a bit? How about you four, versus me? Tell you what, I'll even make it quick. After I take out your buddies I'll give all my attention to you. Either she'll stop me, the cops will show up, or you'll be dead. Should we find out which will come first? All right lads, let's go. Are you okay? I'm fine, thank you for what you did. I know you. You were at Hayes a while back. You're Luke's girlfriend. Yes I am. He'd be grateful for you helping me. You can save it. I didn't do it for him. Luke and I still have unfinished business. This was a separate matter. I won't stand by and watch some, wannabes, threaten a defenseless woman. Even if she is Luke's girlfriend. I'm not defenseless. I can take care of myself, and I don't recall having asked for help. Please. Even if you did manage to take out one, maybe even two, there's no way you could have handled all four. Whether you asked for it or not, you needed my help and I saved your ass. You said thank you already, let's leave it at that. McKenna, what's going on? Nothing. He was just leaving. Oh my god, really? When I found my phone, I looked out the window and almost freaked out when I saw Owen standing next to you. What he want? Nothing. These jerks were harassing me, and he made them leave. Owen is not a good person. That night in Hayes, he only came in to start a fight. He and his friends had no right being there. What do you know about him? All I know is what Link's told me and what one of my friends said. After the party, Link was going on about how Nico should have fought Owen then and there. Apparently, they've known each other for a long time. Nico and Owen have even gotten in an altercation outside the arena before. Link said that Owens killed more people in the pro Eliams than anyone else. What about your friend? What did they say? She dated him not so long ago. She told me that he was arrogant, neglectful, and abusive. He would rip her apart with his words. And one night, she showed up at my door distraught. They'd gotten in an argument, and Owen had hit her. She tried pressing charges, but the cops wouldn't pursue it. She left school a week after it happened. Then why would Owen have helped me if that's how he treats women? I'm not saying that Juliet's friend is a liar, but there was something about our interaction that doesn't add up. Hey. How's Jules? She's good. We had a nice time today. We really connected, and definitely have become closer. Juliet invited us to Vermont this weekend. She and Link are going snowboarding while they have time. That's really awesome. But I am gonna have to pass on Vermont. I'm not that big a fan of the cold. There's... No. You go. I met Bobby's father, Thomas Goodwin. He and Professor Shields have been friends for ages. Shields wanted me to meet him. Mr. Goodwin is a big part of Aurelius. While we were talking, the head of Crassus barged into Shields' office unannounced. His name is Lazarus Caius Crassus. Goodwin and Shields warned me that Lazarus most likely wants to see me dead because of my blood history. They said that, long ago, his ancestor was given the task of killing Spartacus and failed. Now that he knows I'm the Echo, Lazarus thinks he can redeem his ancestor's honor. I don't want you to worry, but it would be wrong for me to keep this from you. Lazarus Crassus is a callous individual, and it's possible he may go as far as to try and get to me by coming after you. I've never lied to you, and I'm not going to start now. You deserve to know, but I promise I will lay down my life making sure no harm ever comes your way. You don't have to tell me. I know. 